This is the College of Knowledge. Dr. Douglas Mamvura, CEO, Disruptive Technologies Africa. Affectionately known as a marketing guru in Zimbabwe, Dr. Mamvura is a marketing zealot whose reputation in business strategy, brand building, and visionary leadership is impeccable. You know, I just thought I would just share with us tonight on one of the topics that I believe is very, very critical. You know, strategic conversations as we navigate in a turbulent environment. Um, this is really key because most people have given up. I, I really liked what Simba was talking about. You know, tough times do not last, but tough people do. It is very important the way we see the world. Hey, you are, you are going ahead of me, please. <laughs> Just go back. The way we see the world is not the way it is, but the way we are. So in this same environment, there are people who are making so much money, where people are complaining and whatnot. Others are not. Same industry. That's why I've often argued that sunshine falls equally on all surfaces. But it is only the polished surface that can reflect it. You know, dull surfaces absorb light, and polished surfaces reflect light. Are you a dull surface or a polished surface? It's up to you. So regardless of the nature of the environment that we may find ourselves in, you can still make money. It all depends on the, on the mindset that you have. We really have to have um, the mind of a strategic warrior. You, you, have to, you have to have that tough mental attitude in order for you to be successful. Because without that, there is no way through which you can be su successful. So I want to challenge us, the nature of our mind. How do we think? It starts with how you see yourself. You know, there's no one who can make you feel inferior without your consent. I hope you can really interpret that picture. You know, for me as a believer, I know that, you know, the power that rose Christ from the dead resides within me. You know? So I'm deadly. It resides within me. I have the mind of Christ. You know, First Corinthians 2.16. I have the mind, not I shall. And as Christ is, so am I in this world. 1 John 4.17. So... Because of that kind of you know, thinking, I have a tough mental attitude. That is what helps me to really move on. Now, in business, you can either be a prey or a predator. So you have to be very careful. If you are not a, if you are not a predator, people are going to have you for breakfast or for lunch. So again, it depends on that tough mental attitude. So now, let's talk about the future. Now, looking at, I, li I like actually the, the, the whole theme, the whole focus. <laughs> you know. Focusing on this future, now. Do you know the future is not some place we are going, but one we create. The paths are not found, but they are made. We actually create our own future. We, 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 we make our own future, you know? So all of us here are where we are because that is exactly where we've decided to be. It has nothing to do with the environment. It has nothing to do with your background. No matter how many times you have failed in life, do you realize that you, know, you don't drown by falling on water? You drown by staying there. You actually create your own future. And this is exactly what we need to do. So how do we do that? We have to be bold to challenge tradition. You know, Dakota Wisdom says that if you discover that you are riding on a dead horse, the best strategy is to dismount. You may argue that it is cheaper to feed a dead horse. You may decide to harness dead horses together. You may even decide to flag a dead horse. You may even decide to, to benchmark how other organizations ride dead horses. But after you've tried all these strategies, you're still going to have to dismount. So it is important for us to learn to move with the times. Because when we look at the future, it actually evolves. You know, how does it evolve? It comes actually in two parts. One of them is actually within our own influence. Things that you can really imagine, discover, design, or create. That's one side. The other side, this is now where we talk about the turbulence now. It's outside our control, even our consciousness. You know, that is what is unknown, unpredictable, and it emerges. So this is why it's very important to, now how do you navigate in an environment like that, which is unknown? You really have to have a, a certain way of doing strategy. You know, how do you craft a strategy in a turbulent environment? So when we, when we move on, we find that uh, 
there are certain questions that we really have to, to, to pose. You know, what are we seeing? You know, as leaders, you, you look at the environment now, you are saying, what are you seeing? Do you know eyes that look <laughs> are common, but eyes that see are rare. You can be looking at the same thing, but seeing totally different things altogether. So some of the questions that you really want to, to, to pose are, as, as a leadership, as an executive even within your team, what are we seeing? What are we hearing? You know, what are we missing in this environment? What is happening in other industries? You know, because <laughs> one of the good examples that I always want to quote is, was in the financial services sector. You know, the banks were so excited, they, they were so relaxed, and they thought they had everything, you know? And uh, they, were, they thought they were the best thing that had ever happened since sliced bread. And unbeknown to them, came a, this insurgent brand from nowhere. You know, insurgents, you know what they do? They hit you by surprise. They hit you when you least expect it. And they are very, very courageous. So this insurgent brand came from nowhere. Overnight, they, they found themselves competing with a competitor with more than six million clients from day one. Started running around and, you know, but it was too late. So you really have to keep your ears to the ground. This is why even the issue of disruption is very important. So what is happening in, in other industries? What emerging trends uh, could be game changers? These are some of the questions that you need to pose as you craft your own strategy. When we connect these dots, what patterns really come out? You know, how will this impact on us? And how should we react? And when are you supposed to react? And then, so, there's a need for straight talk. I mean, most, some of the leaders, they, they, want to, they want their subordinates to tell them what they want to hear. And this is one of the challenges that we, we face in business. Most organizations are overmanaged by their underled. You, you manage things and you lead people. You don't manage people. You lead people, you know? So when you look at the dashboard there, you are now saying, you know, um, is our vision still relevant? Is our purpose, our, our value still relevant? And that's exactly what we saw here when they were you know, really trying to freshen up their own brand. Those are some of the things that you really have to look at. You know, is your brand still relevant? Some of us are so, as, <laughs> they are so tied up to our old, tired, you know, business models, which is very sad. You know, our customers, you know, the geographies, the categories, the various channels, are they still relevant in terms of uh, the business. Now, there's something that I really would like to share with us. There's this term called VUCA. Uh, the V stands for volatile, the U stands for uncertain, the C stands for complex, and A stands for ambiguous. This was actually coined by the uh, US military on the onset of the 21st century. Now, this is the kind of an, an environment that we, we find ourselves operating in. You know, the VUCA environment. Now, you, 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 you have to then begin to ask certain questions when you are operating this, because it's a volatile, very turbulent, so uncertain, you know, chaotic, you know, and also ambiguous. So what sort of questions do you want to come up with? You really have to begin to remove the old way of thinking. Do you know you can never use an old map to look for new land? It is very important for us to learn to move with the times. Most of us, we are still stuck, like I was saying earlier on, to our old and tired, you know, concepts. The first question that one really has to pose is, how sustainable is our business model? This is one of the first questions that you really have to ask yourselves. And right now, because of, you know, the, the disruptions, I mean, uh, you were told that our company is called Disruptive Technologies. We enjoy disrupting, you know, just watch the press. You know, um, most, most of businesses are so relaxed, they don't realize that, you know, the environment has really changed. So you want to really question your business model. The next question is, what is digitization going to do to our costs and margins in terms of our business? It is very important for us to really place our businesses on a digital platform. There are four main advantages that you get there. Maybe number one, you are able to save a bigger market at very, very competitive rates. The second thing, you actually are able to offer convenience to your clients. The third thing is that you will be able to, um, to offer convenience 
to those clients as well. So it makes you also, it, it's, it, it breaks that, you know, entry barrier when you are actually placing your, your business on a digital platform. Because like this other insurgent brand, I know my colleague is actually here. <laughs> they, it came from Norway and with a very low, you know, budget. They, they managed to really, you know, uh, upstage both of the competitors there. The next question is, where should we invest so we remain relevant? in this digital world. Because whether we like it or not, we have to really appreciate the importance that there's digitization. The next question now is that, from which industry will our new competitor come? Banks never knew that their new competitor would come from that insurgent brand. I love that, that brand, you know? you know. They didn't even know. And right now, they are still scratching their heads and they can't even, because that, that insurgent brand is way ahead of most of these guys because they thought they were so established. Because the beauty about technology is that, I remember during my days in the financial services sector, we used to post that we've got so many branches worldwide, you know, countrywide, we've got so many ATMs, you know, but right now, your phone is your branch. Your phone is your ATM. Now, I don't need to really invest in all that technology. And so it becomes very easy for me to compete with this guy. So this is why we love technology. The next question that you also have to pose is, what should be our digital strategy? You have gone are the days when one would just look at uh, IT as a, as a department. It really has to embrace the whole strategy of the business. And the next question again that we have to look at is, can we survive on our own or do we need a partner? You know, <laughs> there's a common saying here in Zimbabwe, you know, some people, they would, they would rather have 100% of a rate. It's better to have maybe 10% of an elephant than 100% of a rate. So it is very important, you know, to, to ensure that we, we, you look for partners so that you can strengthen your muscle. So these are some of the key questions that we really need to, uh, to, to ask ourselves. Now, as, as I try to come towards, you know, rounding up the, the, this whole conversation, what sort of questions, what options then do we have you as leaders, the first one is to disengage and move at your own pace, just to ignore that, ah, digitization, what is it? This won't, won't last, you know? And the second point is we ride all the horses at once. You become a general practitioner. In other words, you want to try and boil an ocean. It really doesn't work, you know? The third option, is to leapfrog. This is what I would really suggest we do in, our, in terms of our businesses. Do you know it's very easy to leapfrog in business? Very easy, like this insurgent brand that I spoke about. It's all, it's all in the mind. Your mind can be your greatest asset or your greatest liability, depending on how you use it. It's very easy. The degree of success you achieve in life will always depend on the amount of desire you possess. The higher you aim, the higher you go. If your bar is this low, there's no need for you to jump that high. You know, this is one thing I love about being, and I don't make, you know, an apologies for that, about being a Christian. You know, in the old covenant, God would say, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Then I come to the New Testament. What does the Bible say? In first, you know, uh, Corinthians 2.16, you have, not you may, you have the mind of Christ. So those thoughts that are higher <laughs> than, <laughs> ah, my goodness, they are now existing within me, you know, as a believer. That power that rose him from the dead, you know, now resides, not may or shall, uh -uh, it resides. Now, that is what will enable me to leapfrog because I have, I'm a supernatural human being. I'm not just an, an ordinary human being. So that's how I will leapfrog. The, the last option is to sit still and leave out the storm. And this is what some of the business are doing. Right now, they're just hoping against hope. Now, hope is not a plan, you know, <laughs> that they will survive. You will not survive if you just sit still. So the guys are just sitting still and they just hope, you know, the storm will be over. Never, never, ever. So be very careful about that. So as we move on, you really have to know your terrain. You know, knowledge inspires confidence. Know exactly your environment. Know your terrain. I remember when I was in the corporate world, I used to invite people even for interviews. 
you know, from competitor companies. And I would hear a lot, you know, some people would say, but this guy was saying he's a believer. Do you know in Numbers uh, 13, the Bible talks about the fact that uh, Moses actually sent spies. Spies. <laughs> There's no country in the whole world that doesn't have an equivalent of our CIO. There's no country like that. So you need business intelligence. Know your environment because knowledge inspires confidence. Who is your competitor? Never be worried about the size of the competitor. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight that matters, but it is about the size of the fight in the dog that matters. So you really have to be resilient. And you can do it because, like I said, it's all in the mind. So what products do they have? You know, uh, how, how competitive are they? You also have to choose your own battlefield to fight com uh, your competitors. What do I mean by this? You focus on your strengths. Don't focus on your, on your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths. And this is what you have to do, is you craft your, your, um, your strategy. And create a distinctive a, you know, purchase experience for your clients. You want to delight your clients. You really, you know, customers are like the blood within your veins. You can't do without them. So it is very important to ensure that you look after your customers, but not just looking after your customers. I like what he said about his own staff. The way you treat your staff members is the way they will treat your customers. So it is very important for you to also make sure that you, 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 you treat your staff members well. You know? So as, as, as I've been talking about this whole issue of strategy, we can do it even in this turbulent environment. You can still make money. It's still possible. It doesn't matter that you have failed before. Like boxing, you don't have to win every round in order for you to win a fight. But what you have to do is to accelerate your ability to get to the end of the fight with more rounds won and less damage to your body. That's the resilience that you need to, to, to have. You know? So it can be done even in this turbulent environment. You can make money even in this turbulent environment. This is why the race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. This is your time, this is your chance to make a difference. Thank you.